Hummingbot Foundation, we're an open source Python code base for people to write scripts. We started out with market making. Now we have also expanded to more directional strategies and DEXs as well. And the reason why we created Hummingbot Scripts is because we realized that in our community, there are many people who are successful, who we found out that many have customized their own strategies. For BotCamp Cohort 3, it's a six-week core course. I'll be creating additional modules down the line as well. For example, directional strategies, bot orchestration, etc. And basically, if you join BotCamp, it's an annual membership where you will have access to the BotCamp core course additional events that we'll be creating and courses and also our prioritized communities and channels where people ask questions about scripts and other things as well. And this cohort, we have students from over 20 countries. We're really proud of our cohort. We'll do a scripts presentation. How it works is that every student will present their own script, likely through the Loom video. Let's go to the scripts presentation now. Trailing Geometric Grid by Andy. Hey everyone, I'm presenting the Trailing Geometric Grid strategy. It's basically a dramatic improvement of the classic grid. This is to capture volatility of an asset because as you know, assets are in sideways most of the time. So a grid is basically a classic strategy that really works, but it has their own limitation versus you need to have your funds lock on base and quote and you have minimum maximum price you need to define that and the other thing is that most of the strategies using the step in the arithmetic so basically when you have a starting price at 1000 let's say and maximum price 10,000 the percentage is going down and down and down all the way the price is moving up and also the most important thing is that I mean it when it goes out, out of range below your minimum or your above your maximum, you basically loss of opportunity. So trailing geometric grid has their own take profit for each step and also its stop loss. And the step into price geometric, it follows the price anywhere. So you don't need to set minimum and maximum. And also the most important thing is capital efficient. Basically, most of the market order you don't need to hold base asset if your quote is in usdt you just need to start with usdt without having need to buy the base asset it works with diversification on multiple assets you can trade on multiple pairs using the same basket of quote hello this is small tokens rebalancing strategy it's a directional trading strategy type cta which is commodity trading advisor automated so the hypothesis is that small tokens have a biggest potential to increase in value over time but also risk of losing its value. So the purpose of the strategy is to track market performance of the portfolio of tokens and then rebalance the allocated value between the better performance performant tokens. So the strategy acts on behalf of uninformed, uneducated trader who tries to track the behavior of informed traders who probably discover some potential improvement on a small token and then try to kind of act on it on the market. So as an input, the strategy takes a list of assets, tokens, and initial allocation. If I don't have any preferences, I can allocate equal amounts to each token. And then as a signal, the strategy receives market overview from the coin market cap, and then calculates as a performance indicator traded volume over 24 hours period versus uh, market, caps for the market cap for the given token. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm a software engineer based in Hong Kong in Singapore. So today I would like to showcase you the script that I've written in the bot camp. The script that I've written is about cross DEX arbitrage. For the setting of my script, there are two DEX I consider. Firstly is a pancake swap. Secondly is a sushi swap. The chain that I consider is Binance Smart Chain and the trading pay I consider is RAP, BNB and USDT. Since Binance Smart Chain pay in BNB, that's the reason why I consider RAP, BNB as a trading pair because it's easier to calculate the profit without the need to convert the rate. Let's walk through the workflow of my script. So on take is the entry point that will be run per second. It will proceed to do some pre-check to check whether there's a wallet, whether the wallet has enough of reserve for the gas fee and to check whether the data fees are ready. Once it's passed, it will check whether if there's any asynchronous task from the tech that is ongoing. You see some box are marked at gray. Those are the operation that requires asynchronous task. When those operation is ongoing, it will have a flag to tell that 
the on asynchronous task is ongoing. In this case, the on take will stop here and proceed to the next take. If there's no asynchronous task ongoing, it will check if there's any transaction that has submitted but is still waiting to be completed. Let's say in this case we don't have any, we will proceed to find trading opportunities. There are two options. Either we buy the base token in DEX A and sell the base token in DEX B, or we buy the base token in DEX B or sell the base token in DEX A. Once we find that it's profitable, we will check if the wallet has enough of balance to execute a trade. If there's enough of balance, it will execute a trade. Let's take the first scenario as, a, as an example. It will submit a buy order in DEX A and submit a sell order in DEX B. It will happen concurrently to optimize the speed. And you can see that this operation will happen asynchronously. So it may take longer than one second. In this case, I will toggle the flag to say that, okay, there's a asynchronous task ongoing. That's why I need to have this check. Once the transaction has submitted, the script will internally keep track of the keep track of the transaction as a state. And if the script found that there's such transaction safe in the state, it will proceed to query the transaction status of those transactions to see if those transactions has been completed. If they are completed, it will try to reset the state in the script. For example, it will reset the transaction that has been cached, essentially those transactions that are pending. It will reset to be none. I think this chart summarizes the overall flow of my script. My name is Jackie, and for my RG, it is the cross-exchange market making triangular arbitrage. It's like to find some arbitrage opportunities in between three pairs of tokens. Like if you are going to buy the coin, BF, BTC, and TH, and you can just sell the Bitcoin to, to sell the Bitcoin and USDT, and also to buy the ETH USDT in order to capture maybe some kind of mispricing. And this is the regular triangular arbitrage. And for my strategy, actually, I'm going to do a cross exchange market making. Competition is pretty large right now. It's would be better to do some cross exchange market making in order to capture more uh, opportunities. And also I have discussed with my mentor, Yala, and he gave me some opinions like, oh, maybe you can try to do some triangular arbitrage in using BTC or ETH as the core asset. It is because usually the pairs is using the USDT as the core asset. If you're going to use BTC or ETH as the core asset, usually the spread will be wider. However, if you're going to notice about the ETH USDT or BTC USDT, usually the liquidity is very, very high and there's almost no spread. So if you're going to place a Mecca or uh, maybe a bit order like on the Mecca exchange with the BTC as the quote asset, once it gets filled, you can enjoy a wider spread from the Mecca exchange by placing that order. And immediately after it gets filled, you can just sell the pairs token with the USDT and at the tick exchange and then buy back the BTC and the USDT. And usually the BTC USDT or ETH USDT uh, will get a very high liquidity and almost no spread. So you can just enjoy the wide spread and capture the, the spread difference in the Mac exchange with that low liquidity on using the BTC or ETH as a core asset and then to enjoy a high liquidity and the narrow spread so that if once you get hatching the position in the tech exchange you can enjoy the, the narrow spread and without losing much money in terms of the spread also there's also uh, another benefit is like you will get a lower fees in some popular token pairs for example like btc and usdt and actually it is a zero transaction fees in Binance right now. And no matter you are going to do a maker or a taker, so you can enjoy the, the low fees with some specific popular pairs and in order to explore more opportunities and higher profitability. Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to present a strategy that is about the illiquid token market making. So initially I have a strategy on my own written in pure Python and then running alongside with Hummingbot pure market making. And then we found that the API limits, they are like getting blocked a lot of times because they're running multiple scripts. It's not a very used maximum utility of the API limits. So that's why we think it's a good idea to actually integrate everything into the Hummingbot. But we run out of the ideas of how to actually make multiple strategies together. So I think in this presentation, I think the most important thing that you can take away is probably the running multiple strategies in Hummingbot script. So in my script, I have two strategies. One strategy was actually developed by Fatty. It's a simple PMM with a more dynamic price 
floor and ceiling. I just copy that script originally and then I just paste it here. And then I have another strategy is called the mid price strategy. I'll set a threshold price and then based on the threshold price, if the threshold price is greater than the market price, then the market, I will just sell in the market on the limit order first and then buy in the market at the same price to actually artificially create the volume. If the pressure price is lower than the latest market price, then I'll do the reverse things. But in the script, if you want to change the strategies, you can just replace the strategies and then work on your own strategies. I explain you my strategy from the bot camp, the CX cross exchange market making with rebalancing. The idea is to use a standard cross exchange market making strategy to find arbitrage opportunities between exchanges, but also to include a rebalancing trade if the base asset or the quote asset ratio gets too high. So the script above here, it's mainly the cross exchange market making, but here you can see calculate asset ratio on exchanges and the base asset percentage. And if the base asset balance is below a target base asset percentage, or basically both percentages for the quote or the base asset, then make a rebalancing trade. The in here that basically shows the cross exchange market making above and below here, it is the rebalancing part.